Hello and good morning everybody. Um, Morgan says good morning. See she's ready to um, chit chat with everyone. Say good morning Morgan to our viewers. Hello everybody. This is going to be episode 3 of Morgan's Den Chicago. Um, so in the past two episodes we talked about the home, what to do with the home, how to protect the home. And this episode, we want to talk about the self, the person you are, the individual you wish to be, and who you wish to become in this life, in this world. So, as you see, Morgan is ready to talk about her story as a familiar, as an individual who has, over time, developed a personality a sense of presence, um, a, a, a child of light. So Morgan is about seven and a half, eight, maybe eight and a half years old, technically. We're not exactly sure how old Morgan is. Um, I met Morgan about three years ago. Uh, she was a pet of, sorry about that folks, um, she was a pet of, um, my roommate at the time, um, and he did not treat her very well, unfortunately, he, um, abused her, he would, um, physically harm her, he would also spill beverages on her and not clean her up would not take care of her cat box, so she was um, kind of covered in feces behind her. Uh, she was overweight because he didn't feed her properly. Um, and yeah, she was just in a very, very awful state when I met her. Um, and as a um, me, myself, I did animal rescue uh, when I lived in Michigan, Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, for about seven, oh, no, sorry, about eight to ten years, give or take. Um, and during my time as an animal rescuer, I would go out and I would see pets and feral stray animals, um, dogs and cats especially, that were mistreated, abandoned by their um, partners, by their families, by the world around them so they've had to figure out how to struggle and to survive on their own um it's sad it really is it's it's horrible it's heartbreaking and when we see animals that are mistreated um in this manner um it really it really sparks to light as to what people are thinking and why why would people treat animals um, who only want to be loved in this type of fashion. It's awful. Absolutely, absolutely awful. Um, so I, I was looking for a place to stay, and so um, my roommate, uh, the gentleman at the time, offered me a good deal in a room, and I took it. Um, and in this apartment, I found Morgan. Um, Morgan was, again, um, overweight, covered in feces, um, Hair was completely matted um, along the back side, especially where beverages had spilled on her. Uh, speaking of beverages spilling on her, I should probably grab my coffee out of the way here. Um, she was not in the best of shape, let's put it that way. So I slowly, over time, started taking care of her and really seeing to cleaning her up and making her a beautiful princess that she is, uh, a beautiful familiar that she is. Um, and so we had to work on her behavior because in the beginning she was very skittish. She, again, she was physically abused. Um, and so we got her to recognize me uh, as someone who loves her and someone who only wants to do well by her. And it got her to see the love and light that I was willing to give to her. So once we got her comfortable with being touched, then we took care of getting her on a proper diet, getting her to lose a little bit of weight. So once the weight was lost, 
Um, and she was comfortable with the amount of food she was getting instead of being overfed and underwatered. Um, we had to balance that out. Um, she was horrible. Her, her stomach would almost drag on the ground. That's how big she was. It was awful. Awful, awful, awful. A big, big, big girl, weren't you, Morgan? Now, now, you, could, now you can fit in that summer bikini that you always wanted to. Um, <laughs> we're working on that still, but anywho. So, the, so the continuation of the care, um, once you got her on a proper diet, we started to work on brushing her and petting her, letting her know that not all hands want to do harm to her, um, that everybody is not like the previous owner, um, who at this point, um, in her care had completely stopped. Uh, he completely, um, abandoned returning to our apartment. He had essentially moved out with his new partner, uh, which I'm all for love, but let's not make love, uh, overtake our life. So we're going to go ahead and just quickly move this computer out of Morgan's way here because Morgan, um, clearly does not want you to see the pictures I posted at this moment. Um, speaking of photos, you can catch all the photos before and after um, on the new album, Morgan Le Fay. Um, so, returning back to her care. So, it was a long process of getting the mats off, cleaning her back, making sure that she no longer had these dreadlocks hanging off of her. And it was a long process. And most people would have originally taken her to a groomer or some type of professional who would then charge them an ex exponential amount of money to do this. I, I because I have um, experience in animal care, did not have to um, resort to those type of things, which uh, was really, really great. Uh, I took care of it myself. Um, I bought a, a kit. Um, and separate pieces, which I keep in a box here. Hold on one second. Continue focusing on Morgan and her little drinking water up there. You know, I have this water up here so that it can help humidify the apartment when the radiator's on. And Morgan just treats it like her personal drinking dish, which is totally fine. I mean, if you're thirsty, have a drink, girl. But if you look over here, Morgan, your water is sitting there, perfectly fine, filtered, not f not from the tap, but she's like, no, I don't I don't want that water, Daddy. I want the water that you put on top of the radiator because it has rocks in it. Well, Morgan, get your rocks on, I guess, if that's what you do. <laughs> um, so again, we're talking about self-image. We're talking about self-empowerment. Uh, I'm currently in the middle of telling the story of Morgan Le Fay. Um, so I went out and bought this kit. So here we have um, nail clippers. We have, uh, I think it's kind of zoomed in still. Hold on one second here. There we go. We have nail clippers. We have a brush. I went and got this one brush called the Furminator. And now this brush is great for getting under the coat, getting the bottom layer of Morgan's um, Fur all the way around. It doesn't really hurt the um, skin itself. As you can see, it's kind of, it's a little dark, but you can kind of see how it has small teeth there. There we go. So you just very simply you just take it and you just and it pulls up all the hair instantly. You can and it, you had this little push thing here where uh, it pushed the hair off, but it broke off unfortunately. Um, a second large brush. And then uh, what really helped was uh, this here. Now this is like a mat comb. So you just very simply, um, you would get underneath the dreadlock and pull it up from the skin little by little. So this is say, this is the dreadlock here. You would just simply slide this under and pull it up until the dreadlock starts to release from the skin and starts to um, break away on its own accord and then you very simply just start cutting it away now when you're cutting away um dreadlocks off uh animal you don't want to use sharp scissors you don't want to use a knife you want to use a pair of blunted yes morgan come here morgan what are you doing over there morgan you want to use a pair of blunted um 
shears. Uh, here is a good example. Uh, so as you can see here, like it's not going to really cut the skin. It's going to focus more on the hair. You can kind of control it a little bit more. These are a pair of fabric cutting shears, which work perfectly. Um, so as you can see, so this whole kit minus the little laser, that's just kind of out there. Um, I bought all these pieces accumulatively, maybe about $35. And using this process of grooming and cleaning, we were able to clean off all the mats off of Morgan and make her a beautiful shining coat again and really allow her to be pet, petted and get her the love that she deserves. Like that, people don't come over and see her and say, oh my God, she's a gross kitty. No, where, where are you, Morgan? We're talking about you. No, people come over and they see this beautiful darling animal who only wants to be loved, who only wants to share her uh, grace with the world. And look, now, now before you could not see any of her stripes. Look at that. Now you can see her stripes. You can see her tail. Look at the look at beautiful shine in her eyes. Like, she's absolutely gorgeous now. So empowered. So, so loved. Whereas before, she was in a horrible condition. She was so scared of life. And now she's been reborn. She's been transformed. Her energy is better. And all this because it just took love. It took love. And part of love is loving yourself as much as the world needs it. The world needs love and we, we need love. And the only way we can give love is if we have love for ourselves to have first. So um, we have this little trinket. Come on, Morgan, show you a little trinket here. So as you can see here, we have a little pentagram. This is Morgan's pentagram necklace. She's like, daddy, this is choking me. Sorry, Morgan. Here we have her purple heart with her name on it, Morgan Le Fay. And of course, if she's ever lost, her, my phone number is on the back so I can be contacted. So come on, Morgan. Let's go ahead and refer to a book. Now that we talked about recognizing self-image and self-worth, and we need to really get a grasp on what it is about us that we love. What is it about us that makes us feel special in this world? Is it the fact that we have family? Is it the fact that we have friends? Is it a passion in your career? Is it uh, the idea of there being more out there in the world that you can pull from? What, what makes you want to be you? That's the most important question you have to really, really focus on. What do you love about you? And what do you need for you to be happy, successful, to prosper and grow as a spiritual person? Now think about this. Now, I'm not saying that to be selfish. I'm not saying that you should only consider what you want and desire. That's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is that in order to really get a grasp on your self-worth and your self-image and what you believe you are capable of doing, you need to understand that what builds your home? What builds you inside? Now, in the previous episodes, we talked about building the home um, physically and metaphysically around us. But what about the home inside of us? What about, what about our heart that needs to be healed? What about the things that we feel we have been mistreated about? What do we feel that we have been wronged against? These are the things that we have to consider and really think about and give some full-hearted knowledge to and give it a good meditation. Now, those of you who don't know how to meditate, there's several books out there and there's several guides online. Um, one I really uh, enjoy is um, Philip. He is uh, one of the uh, directors of the OBOB. -O 
D, the order of um, bards, lords, and druids, uh, which is a great organization out of the UK, um, which focuses on paganism, druidism, and uh, working and he does a great meditation series. Um, I can put his link uh, down in the comments section when we're done with this. Um, so when we talk about self, the self, where, where do we find ourselves? Do we find ourselves in our heads? Do we find ourselves in our heart? Do we find ourselves wanting to really be with ourselves? Do we find ourselves wanting to be away from ourselves? Do we love ourselves? Do we hate ourselves? These are the things we have to address. And do we love ourselves too much? Do we love ourselves not enough? Do we hate everything about ourselves? Do we hate nothing about ourselves? Do we hate the fact that we don't love ourselves or don't hate ourselves? These are questions that we kind of ponder and we think about. And we have to recognize that in order to build your home and your heart and your soul and your uh, connection to the source and to the gods and goddesses and be able to draw upon their energies and use their love and light to help guide you, you have to be able to commune when you're, with yourself and yourself as a whole. You can't do things half the time and expect a full result. And the same thing works when you do ritual, when you do a spell, when you do magic weaving. When you pull upon the energy and you focus it and you cast a spell, you cast um, your purpose for something to happen, we need to be able to say we're doing this full heartedly with all our soul, with all our spirit, with all our energy, with all, the full connection of the universe behind us. And the only way we can fully connect is if we can fully c can connect with ourselves first. So um, that being the case, um, there's a book, because uh, every episode we're going to do a book. So this episode we're going to talk about cutting through the spiritual materialism. Uh, being able to find self-worth and self-image. This book uh, is... Um, written by a very inspirational um, Asian man. Um, I always got afraid of mispronouncing his name. Um, Chagoyam Turampa. Uh, probably said that horribly off and wrong. But this gentleman um, is a great scholar. Uh, here's a little picture of him on the back. There you go. Um, I think I bought this book for two dollars. Um, as you can see, it's valued 14. So this book is about a two-part series seminar that uh, talks about um, the Buddhist path, how to find yourself, how to break through the world around us, and how to really get to the heart of ourselves, and how to build ourselves, and find the wholesomeness that we are missing that needs to be rediscovered. So I'll put, uh, I'll put this down in the um, comments so you know what book this is again. So again, this is called Cutting Through the Spiritual Materialism. It's talking about releasing yourself from the harshness of the world and how to really find yourself and make yourself a better full person, how to bring yourself to fulfillment, uh, not just spiritually, but also Bring yourself to fulfillment mentally. Bring yourself to fulfillment um, here and being successful so that your home is filled. And again, we're not, in this episode, we're not talking about the home. Home. We're talking about the home inside of you. This is what needs to be cleaned and cared for the most out of everything. The home is where the heart is and your heart is your home. And that's the most important thing to remember. So again, um, I recommend getting this book. It is about the Buddhist path, how to follow it, how to release the world around you, and how to just really find fulfillment so that you can connect with the universe and use all the full abilities that she is granting us to be better people, to be able to heal and give love and light. So Morgan um, is back. She's like, hello, everybody. Uh, she's like, that's a great lesson, Daddy. Just thank you for sharing my story. 
Um, so Morgan, we talked about the self-image. We talked a little bit about um, you and what we, uh, you um, offer uh, as far as uh, where you came from, I mean, excuse me. So now we're going to talk about guides and familiars again because that's what Morgan is and that's what the show is all about is learning. So once you are able to reach a connection with the god and goddesses and the source, uh, you are able to then call upon guides and familiars. And when these uh, beings are called upon, they seek you out and they make a purposeful connection and to reach out to you to be part of your life and bring forth the energies and magics to better your world and better their world also. Again, look at how beautiful her coat is. Look at how shiny this is. This is from this is from three years of love and care. No more mats. Her booty's all clean. She's beautiful. Look at this. You can see her stripes. Oh, so soft too. Well, we love you, Morgan. That's why we take care of you. She's like, Daddy, the light's so bright. Sorry, but it's kind of dark in here right now because I have the mood set as the sun is rising. Um, so, familiars and guides, they come to us to teach us lessons, to help us motivate ourselves. They come in different forms. Um, familiars come in different forms as well. Morgan happens to be a cat in this life. Um, her next life, she might be a lizard, a person, a um, bug. She might be... Um, a tree. We never know what happens in the next life, do we, Morgan? No, we don't. We just let things happen and the universe takes care of us. So, when guides and familiars come to us, they bring a sense of help and they help us understand the life around us. Uh, again, you talk about people who have um, pets they take with them uh, as service animals. Um, at first relieving anxiety and relieving stress and sometimes that is abused uh, unfortunately which makes it look bad for all service animals but um, the and understand the understanding there is that these are people's familiars these are the animals that help guide them through their lives and make life easier for them and allows them to reach a sense of fulfillment for themselves so Morgan I didn't know at the time I needed a pet I, when I moved to Chicago, I decided that I was no longer going to have a pet here in the city because it was not fair to coop up an animal in a small apartment or um, a, a putting an animal uh, in a smaller enclosement that she cannot be free in. So I decided that I did not want a pet. Um, and then when I saw the condition that Morgan was in and the way she was being treated, I decided that that wasn't fair. That wasn't fair to her. And so we went ahead and took care of her, brought her into our home, and showed her love and light. And now she this is this beautiful animal. And we love each other and we care for each other. And she knows when I'm happy. She knows when I'm sad. She knows when we're doing magic. She knows when the camera's on or off. <laughs> um, again, she's just like a dog. She understands commands. Um, ever trained on whistles, we're still working on fetching, but that's just it. Like, I didn't realize I was missing that fulfillment and enrichment that I needed in my life. And when Morgan came along, she brought that fulfillment. So I then got a greater connection to the source and to the universe and was able to reawaken the love for animals and care and be able to have one of my own. So, again, uh, familiars are our guides, they are our helpers, they are our teachers, they are practitioners of magic, just like we are. Uh, so she's like, look at that, so true, Daddy. Yes. Yes, you are. So, that being the case, remember that in order to better yourself, you need to take care of yourself first. Make sure you have all the right love, all the right necessities, all the right guidance and help and teaching you lessons that you could possibly need. So again, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. I think that we've had a great conversation about fulfilling the self, transformation, 
If Morgan can transform, you can, can transform too. It just takes time and patience and understanding and acceptance. Oh, Morgan's trying to bite me now. Morgan, be nice. Um, it's like that light is so bright. I'm sorry, Morgan. So, again, in order to better yourself, it takes time, it takes energy, it takes love, it takes understanding, and it takes the effort to make it happen. You can't just wish and dream for it to happen. Things happen when you make them happen. In order to make them happen, it takes by taking the first step. And it's up to you to find out how to make that first step happen. And if you need help, the universe is always listening. And the universe will always guide you. You just have to give yourself to the universe first. And then the universe can give to you. So just remember that, folks. The universe is out there. We did a small meditation of realizing that you have to bring self-fulfillment first. I recommend checking out uh, Philip. He is great for meditations. Um, I'm, I do meditations off camera. I don't, I don't really put my meditations on the camera. Um, but I will give you guidance and tell you where you can find sources for doing meditations. And I can tell you sources and books of... Uh, what to get. So that being the case, folks, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap up here at the Morgan's Den. Uh, much love, everyone, for checking out episode three. Remember that we love you and many blessings. And if you ever have questions or ever want to leave comments, please feel free to do so below. Uh, I will do my best to get back to everybody in a loving, timely manner. Um, if I don't get back to you right away, just know that... Um, we get a little busy sometimes, so we just need a little extra time. Um, so Morgan loves you all. I love you all. Never forget to love yourself and love the world and love others and love the earth. The earth loves you too, most especially. We are her children and she is our mother. So we make sure we take care of her above all else. So love yourself, love the earth, love the universe, love our familiars, love our neighbors, Love our friends, love our family, and just remember, life is grand. So we'll see you in episode four. Thank you for checking out episode three, and much love to everybody. And we'll see you in the next episode. Many blessings. Thank you all for checking us out. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.